Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Bleeding Blue Shirts. John Giannone, Steve Valiquette, as we look to game five. And I'm not so sure, Steve-O, that we thought we'd be here after game two when the Rangers scored nine and Tampa only scored four and the Rangers skated away with a 2 nothing series lead. But here we are, tied at two, pivotal game five at the Garden on Thursday night. Your thoughts as we head to this uh, seminal moment in this series on where we stand right now for both sides. Yeah, John, I think the narrow view definitely is problematic and troublesome because when you're up by two and you spit that back, it feels like you're down in the series, but you almost have to remind yourself that you're at 2-2. Uh, the big picture at 2-2 is that you have two of the next three at home where you've played spectacular hockey, winning the last seven games. I think the players are comfortable there. Uh, the team collective mindset believes they can come home and take it. You could see the comments that Gerard Glant had in his post-game presser after game four. I felt like he was basically saying out loud, just get us home because this is going to be a homer series and we'll take care of business in our two out of three. That's my deep breath take, but certainly very difficult after game four to try and take the best of what was out there with the message that came from the players and coaching staffs from both sides. Because one thing I'd add about what John Cooper said was that he was very competent in saying that, all right, we've got our legs now and this is gonna help us in a long series because we did have nine days between games, between series. Right, right. And I think that's a big element of the discussion now, Steve, is that is there substance to the idea that those nine days off definitely uh, caused some rust to get applied to the whole Tampa machine. But now that that rust has been chiseled away, Tampa looks fresher, Tampa looks quicker, Tampa looks stronger. And the fact that the Rangers have played 18 games in 36 days, not an excuse, but an explanation. How much validity do you think there is to those concepts? I'm trying not to buy in, but I've been there and I know what it feels like. There are times during a long playoff run where you don't even feel like you have the energy to walk up the stairs. And I feel like some of these players are just brutally beaten down, but because they're hockey players, they're gonna find a way. And I'm talking about uh, Ryan Lindgren. You know, I think this guy has the pain tolerance of a cadaver. Um, as long as the players are willing to be able to find a way to do this and to collectively have that mindset, you know, I remember the movie, uh, The Perfect Game, and Kevin Costner is coming back from his hand injury and his trainer is in the gym with him as he's riding the bike and he tells him to take a day off. And Costner snaps on him because he doesn't have the same mindset that he has with what it's gonna take to be successful at that point to rehabilitate and get back. And it really brings me back to my conversation I had with Glenn Anderson when we found ourselves on the train together going to game number seven in the first round against Pittsburgh. And he was talking about how winning Stanley Cups meant that you had to have everyone on board in frame of mind and mindset from the trainers, coaching staff, upper management, locker room attendants. Everybody has to believe. You can't have somebody in your ear saying, well, you know, you guys have come this far, it's house money. You don't wanna hear it. Right. You wanna take this, John, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And, and the reason why I get excited about that is because I think the Rangers can beat Colorado. I think that Kadri being out, that really hurts them. I think that when I'm looking at the long view, uh, Kemper has an eye injury that I suspect is really bothering him. And if it's Pavel Francouz, you, you know, what an opportunity. You're one of three teams that are still playing hockey right now. It is so hard to get here. You don't know if next season you're going to be up against a world beater in your own division. You can't even get out. That's right. just the way this is built. And it's so hard. I, I just hope... And I'm certain that the older guys in the locker room would be able to articulate that to the younger guys. Just say, boys, listen, this does not come along every year. You have to understand what's in front of us here. Uh, you can go home and win this game, and now you're in the driver's seat all over again. I hope the Rangers are collectively believing that. So beyond the IT test, it's unquantifiable to know whether the tank is empty. So let's just assume for the moment that the tank isn't empty and the adrenaline boost they get from the home crowd on Thursday night will be visible. So therefore, from a strategy standpoint, when Gerard Gallant and his players say, we need to get inside more, strategically, Steve, what does that look like? Well, it's amazing how it starts 200 feet away from getting inside. 
that's how hard it is. Uh, what we've seen from Tampa Bay in games three and four was that they are sending their D down the boards on every single offensive zone play. Their wingers are also meeting the Ranger wingers on the boards. The Rangers have three options to get out of their zone. Either it's a controlled breakout because Tampa Bay is actually taking a line change which starts behind your net and you should always be able to get up the ice that way. It's going to be a weak side exit, so they have to get the puck from one side of the ice to the other. That can go back to D or dangerously through the middle, not the best mm -hmm. option. Or a small pop play where the centerman can come underneath and the winger can pop it to him. And at least it's below the puck so they can still come up together. I think that's number one. When you get to the neutral zone, I think the Rangers have to be more cautious and play with less carelessness risk at the offensive blue line. Too many turnovers, John. I mean, we watched the games together. They're just throwing pucks there last night. And it doesn't look to me like it's any bit more than a hope play. When you get inside the zone, that's a whole other animal. Because in game number four, the Rangers had four high danger chances and the ones on the inside of the ice are considered high danger. Well, three of them came in the third period on the power play in garbage time. And two of them were connected to the Panarin goal. So, you know, not that optimistic with the way things looked in game four. You got to go all the way back to games one and two and draw it back up that way. There's a deep belief in Igor Shosturkin. The defenseman, I think they add a lot of value when they join the rush or in zone when they also pinch down the walls. So how do you get to that point? It's going to have to be strategic through all three zones, as I said, but also where you place the puck on the dump-ins because you've got to keep it away from Vasilevsky. He's not Igor Shostakhin, but he's very capable. Yeah, and he has shown that in his in this series. Uh, two statistics to hang your hat on for Game Five, wondering where it's all going to go. Uh, Igor Shostakhin never lost three games in a row in the entire regular season. He's lost two in a row a couple times in this playoff and bounced back with victories. But the bigger element for the Rangers is they've gone almost 139 minutes without an even strength goal. And the overwhelming majority of the game is played at even strength. And that's what they're going to have to solve by way of the way Steve just described it. We're going to be there to describe it all to you. 7.30 for the pregame show on MSG Networks and MSG Go. Then as soon as it's over, we'll be back with a one-hour postgame show after the telecast ends on ESPN. I'll be there. Steve will be there. Henrik Lundqvist will be in studio as well. It is, uh, it's is—it's everything, Steve. I mean, I, I truly believe whoever wins game five will win the series. I feel the same way, 100%. So it's a good thing that we have our lucky charm in the studio with us. Yeah, he's been pretty good in that regard. So we will see you all on Thursday night. Enjoy game five, everyone.